Welcome. Oh. oh. Hi, Neil. Spot on. Sorry, sorry for being late. I am just a little bit late. Sorry about that. <laughs> we're, we're, we're even more core than we thought we were. Um, well, thank you, everyone. Um, and welcome to this first meeting for uh, an awful long time. And as you may recall, our last meeting wasn't core it, although we uh, we continued on. But the, the minutes you'll note are back to the, uh, the last core up meeting. Um, we might want to discuss later the absence of meetings during this time. Um, it's been a matter of sort of concern to me, but uh, it's, it's kind of a hindsight view that we've spent so long without meetings as we progress through the year. And uh, I talked to Lorelei. We both agreed that um, there was little point in holding a meeting. Um, and we haven't got Councillor Mia with us, have we, from the uh, Pension Fund panel? Um, she's been invited, Councillor. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, and obviously they weren't meeting either, so that that gave us a few a few issues as the panel. But perhaps we, perhaps in hindsight, we should have called the meeting, but we didn't. So we're here now. If people want to discuss that later on, then uh, that's fine by me. Uh, I think for, the, for those who haven't heard, Bill, uh, I've spoken to Bill. We were a little worried he was seriously ill. He has had a gallbladder operation from which he's now just about recovered, but he didn't get the paperwork, which has happened before, and he wouldn't have had access to uh, doing it online anyway. So um, he sends his apologies, um, but we're uh, we are core without him, so um, I've agreed that I will kind of stay in contact with him and try and try and provide him with a link so he can attend meetings. But it's it's not a very satisfactory arrangement, really, as he's meant to be representing the pensioners who are, you know, just under a third of the members of the scheme. So it, it's important that they're they're represented from that point of view. Um, I guess if there's no other communications that need to come forward, I've not been advised there are, uh, then let's proceed to the minutes of the meeting of the 24th of October. And a, num a number of items will come up in this meeting naturally, but if people would like to indicate um, that they are going to raise things later rather than discussing them now, that would be that would be useful. Um, and if we just go through initially uh, for accuracy and then come back and go through for, for matters arising. So I, I haven't got any questions for accuracy, but I don't know. Uh, Thomas, Neil, uh, Arminda, you got any problems with accuracy at any stage? I'm quite happy to propose them as an accurate record if that's any help, Chair. Colleagues, are you? OK. Uh, and any matters, we, we will stumble across a number of things as we go on, but uh, any any matters arising? We, we can always. We can always go back. Uh, I think point four, Chair, we um, his ash and actions and I actions of the the. Uh, uh, the, the scheme, uh, the, the local pensions board representatives representatives across the uh, other uh, uh, London boroughs and and, and Laurel, I kindly pass that on to me, and I think we're we're pretty much um, um, medium. Yeah. Uh. I think we discussed it at the last meeting, didn't we? Item four. We did, but I think we've we'd um, we we went away in action. That's the action follow up point. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. chair. Sure. Sorry, uh, it's Harminda. I'm going to have to switch my camera off because I didn't get paper copy, so I'm going to. Go on to my emails to read the documents if that's all right. Just letting you know. Thank you. Should we give you a little time to do that, Amanda? No, I've got it all ready. So I'm just going to switch my camera off so I can just go on to my um, emails. Thank you. Um, there was a suggestion in item four that uh, the West Yorkshire Pension Fund should uh, 
attend board meetings, uh, but using Skype. I mean, obviously, that technology is now Teams. And just to confirm, we, we have Eunice joining us later. Is that correct? We will be joining, yes. Right. Uh, they did that at the recent pension fund panel, and um, uh, that worked reasonably well, I think. Um, I don't know whether anybody has uh, any thoughts about this. Uh, certainly when we did discuss it, uh, although there's a lot of duplication involved here, I think the view was expressed that it was more important that he intend attended our meeting than that he attended the uh, pension fund panel meeting. Um, and I assume that's still our view. I think from from my chair, if I may, I don't, I don't know if I, want, I need to put my hand up here or not. I don't know what the, quite the, the, the protocol is here, but I, I will. Um, um, I, I should have said there's so few of us. Yeah, I'm quite happy for people to interject. I mean, other other protocols have been developed for other meetings, but we're a relatively small group. I don't think it's going to cause too many problems if people interject. Uh, if it is a problem, we'll we'll work something out. Yeah, I, I sort I sort of take a view that. There is an element, although I didn't, I don't get that from from um, from West Yorkshire's presentation uh, or use of um, input or the 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 way in which it's um, scrutinised by managers of the, the pension fund panel. But there is an element of the pension fund panel panel marking their own homework there. I, I, I do I do agree that that it, it probably is a more suitable forum for for. for for compliance of the administration function, but that's just a personal opinion. And it may be for the, the it's it's for the the pension fund panel to 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 support that. Yeah, and Eunice is happy to do this, and he doesn't have to travel down here to do it. So a lot of my objections kind of drop away about duplication um, and him having to travel and so on. Um, it's valuable having him in the meeting and. Um, I think it's something we can re we can revisit at some later stage, but there are certainly issues which we it's very valuable to actually have uh, units available to answer directly. Um, Councillor Mir isn't here, so I will just sort of very quietly say I wasn't convinced that the uh, pension fund panel were being as rigorous um, in questioning him. I mean, he was very thorough, very comprehensive, but there wasn't a lot coming the other way from the pension fund panel. Um, whether that'll be any different with us. I mean, you have to assume we've read read the report and we've thought about it. But um, I think given that, or that's my impression, that uh, it's very important that we do um, uh, try and delve a bit deeper with Eunice. OK. Um, so we can approve the minutes. Yep. OK. Approved. Uh, approved, Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Seconded then. Yep. Um, we have a report now, an, an, an important report from um, from Lorelei. Um, and I guess I just need to get out of the way and let her get on with it. Um, I think we should assume you've read it, but Lorelei will will lead us through the uh, report. Um, yeah, thank you, Chair. The covering report is on page eight of your agenda, and it's um, it's basically to discuss the work of the pension fund panel. So you were all sent uh, either an electronic or a hard copy of the pension fund panel agenda. Um, well, it's not working, is it? Because I moved length out. <laughs> anyway, I'm holding up a copy of the agenda, which isn't working for some reason. Um, <laughs> So you should all have been sent a copy of that. We had the meeting last week. Some of you attended it and we did actually, although the June, July meetings were cancelled for both Pension Fund Panel and Pension Board, we did send out papers for a June Pension Fund Panel meeting and you were all sent copies of that. And so you were all kept in the loop as to what the Pension Fund Panel was doing during the COVID period. So the Pension Fund Panel last we covered the annual accounts, the revised investment strategy, the risk register, which is on this agenda, and West Yorkshire Pension Fund panel, which is on this agenda. 
then the, the confidential items we had last week were the investment advisors report, where we are on the investment strategy, and also a, um, a presentation from the London SIF. So I'm happy to take questions on it. Um, Councillor Mir, it doesn't seem to be in attendance, so she was invited to this meeting. But um, I think quite a few of us were at the pension fund panel meeting, so we've got enough people here to be able to discuss it. If you have any concerns. Yeah. I uh, I should really have contacted Councillor Mir and uh, explained we would like would have liked to have had her here, but um, uh, I would say that her, she's very competent in managing the meetings and they they move through properly and she's clearly read the papers before, so there's I'd say there's an improvement in the way those that that is an improvement in the way those meetings are held, if any, but of course all of us are. All of us can join that meeting if we we wish to, but not not contribute to it. Uh, there were important matters discussed. I don't know whether any of you are going to kind of raise them. I'd, I don't want to carry all this myself, but um, with the strategy, um, are we going to? Will we get to that later, Lorelei, or should we talk about the uh, the investment strategy? Are you talking um, about the investment strategy statement or the review? Yes, because uh, what was put forward, anyone who read the papers uh, should appreciate we, that uh, the the uh, panel didn't kind of stick to the uh, script. They, they weren't just approved. I'm oh, sorry, I'm not quite sure what you mean, Councillor Hearn. Um, well, both with the carbon footprint, uh, there was the proposal of taking on uh, um, was it? and that was uh, deferred. Uh, we, what we agreed on that was that we would invite BlackRock to the December meeting and BlackRock would do a carbon footprint of the BlackRock portfolio and that will be discussed at the panel meeting in December. The proposal that was in the paper was that Northern Trust would do it for all the fund managers, so it would therefore be on a comparable basis, and that would cost £15,000. But there was some dissension against that, and so we agreed that BlackRock would come to the December meeting. Um, if panel like that, then whoever comes to the March meeting could present their carbon footprint. But if you're doing it on that basis, you're not going to get and you're not going to get a timeline of the portfolio as a whole. Yeah. So I realise for most of us it's uh, going from 0 to 60 fairly rapidly, but uh, because of the climate emergency, we're now looking at this um, this carbon footprint and um, we're going to have to get this right. Um, and it is going to cost us money. Um, so Really? I, think, I, I think I might just, if I, if I may, Sam. Um, Certainly. I think the 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 concerns of this board is if it's not frankly for council policy. Um, it's the pension funds activities of do not do not have to be consistent with with the council's policy towards a climate emergency or anything else. It's for us to to meet our fiduciary duties, and for us to ensure that the pension fund are meeting its fiduciary duties. Um, Again, my concern. I, if um, if Bill was here, I'm sure he'd contradict me. But 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 my, I think the concerns of this committee are not with uh, investment decisions per se, um, unless they directly contradict investment strategy statement. In which case, there would be a, an issue with compliance with our stated aims. At the moment, I'm I'm not sure that we have a uh, have a specific stated aim in the investment strategy statement regarding carbon footprint. I.e., if we find a level of carbon um, uh, uh, carbon activity within the portfolio. Do we have any stated aims of how we will act at the moment? I think we're just trying to establish a baseline. Um, but but um, Laurel, I will pick pick me up if I'm wrong there. Um, no, you're absolutely right, Neil. It, it was just to establish a baseline and to hopefully prove that by moving the 60 million from Aberdeen into the SIF sustainable equities, and then by moving the BlackRock 150 million into low carbon that by December 
the footprint of the portfolio would be would have been a lot lower. Yeah. But that's going to be hard to do now because we're not getting Northern Trust involved. Yeah. But um, but we know by as a fact that the carbon footprint will be lower because the carbon footprint of RBC sustainable equities and the BlackRock is a lot lower than what we're in at the moment. I mean, just observation of what, 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 what I've seen elsewhere. I'm not saying where, <laughs> but not just just down the road. Um, is that um, that we 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 reduced our carbon footprint by but, but not by by necessarily by design, but by chance by just just a change in asset allocation from UK. So I think you'll find that mm. the UK asset allocation is heavily weighted towards yeah. oil and gas and yeah. utilities. So if you're moving anything from your going to global you'll, you'll just naturally move over yeah um, i think those were the concerns being expressed in the panel by those people who were expressing a view uh and going back to trying to paraphrase what you were saying that we shouldn't make decisions just based on carbon footprint uh, but we should be aware what the impact was of any decisions that were made um on on carbon footprint uh, and that then you do have the difficulty of that has to be worked in, and I think you're alluding to that, that has to be worked into the investment strategy. Uh, um, and at the moment what we've got is probably quite loose, which is not surprising. Um, but the suggestion that we use the sieve to go directly into carbon, um, carbon offsetting in some way, that that wasn't liked by some some members of the panel. Um, there is the same with the, with the uh, infrastructure fund. I'm, I'm just laboring this point because it is going to come back again. Um, there is a lot of renewable energy in in the uh, CIV uh, uh, infra infrastructure, so we could achieve the goal by moving the funds into that investment. But, but I mean. Taking your point, it isn't. It, it's not appropriate. We should do that simply on the basis that it will reduce our carbon footprint. We should be doing that surely because we believe it's a good investment. Yes. So the RBC sustainable equities that we're moving into, that we're moving the Aberdeen portfolio into right at this moment. The transitions are already happening. Um, that's not necessarily low carbon, they just have a low, lower carbon than what, what we're in at the moment. The discussion that we had about the infrastructure and renewable energy, because we did have a proposal that the panel agreed last March to move into, to consider moving into the SIV renewable energy when that's finished, because they're, they're currently procuring it. But the, the point was made that the infrastructure fund has got 25% renewable energy. So what we're proposing now is at the March 2021 panel meeting, we have the SIV come, and they show you both portfolios. So they show to the panel the infrastructure portfolio and the new sustainable energy one. And then people can have a think about whether they like either of them. They can compare them. Uh, just to spin this out a little longer and give you some flavour, uh, it was the first time we've had the London Civ come and speak to the panel. Uh, no, they came um, a year ago. Uh, did they? Yeah, yeah. It's different people came a year ago. They came last September, I think. Was it September before? Well, they've come a few times actually. Yeah, they come every year. Yeah. Well, they've talked about setting things up, haven't they, and what we should be considering. Mm. But they weren't personal impression. The people we got this time, uh, they didn't didn't actually present that well. So we're, we're looking for, uh, I say we, uh, the pension fund panel are looking for something rather more impressive. Um, you know, would you buy a used car off these people? I mean, you, you, you really do ex expect them to be talking to the panel as if they're selling them something rather than just setting out their stall and saying, uh, well, this, this is available. OK, well. Anything else that needs to be raised from the uh, what happened with the pension fund? The we were a bit. I, I know there was sort of concern that the accounts that we were looking at weren't anything like the finalised accounts, but we were being told there would be very little change. 
it does seem to take a long time to put these accounts together. Do you want me to comment? The, the, the accounts were done on time, they were finalised by June, it's just the um, Mazars, the auditors have delayed auditing them and we don't expect any Sorry. significant changes. I should have said that Rapinda and yeah. we, we've obviously uh, got them here to talk about haven't we somewhere. Mm. Um, yeah. I think there's been a problem across the board with, with the late requests by uh, audit firms with dubious knowledge of what they're asking for. Um, we've 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 had issues just just this week with uh, with, uh, with with questions about um, the way in which the value of derivatives have been expressed. So uh, this is this is very. I don't think this is anything to do with the officers producing the accounts. I think it's right. officers yeah. not understanding what they're asking for. Um, so what, whatever we comment on the accounts later on will be kind of provisional. Yeah. I think I think we're sub subject to a clean audit. Yeah, but we don't expect anything less. So, right. Uh, does that bring us to the risk register? Um, yes, I think it. I think it does, doesn't it? Yeah. Yes, which is on page eight of your printed agendas. So the risk register. It was discussed at the pension fund panel. So it's the whole report here. Uh, such a page 10, page 10, yeah, page 10 of your printed agenda. Um, so we've added one new risk, which not surprisingly is a COVID risk, risk, risk 20. It's a cross cutting risk because our investment and our admin performance and our cash flow are holding up. We've actually scored it as amber, not as red. However, our risk eight, which is the funding systemic risk, we've scored that as red now. That was M amber. And we've scored that as red in recognition of the potential combined impact of global trade wars, a bad Brexit negotiation, and a second unmanageable co uh, global wave of COVID. So that one's become red. There's two risks that have had their scores reduced, systemographic um, ill health retirements. We're now um, pooling all ill health retirements for the employers. This was green before, so it's now even lower green. Uh, some stage we might even take it off the risk register altogether. And we have actually reduced risk 15, which was the pooling risk it's, uh, with the London Civ. We've reduced the impact from catastrophic to critical. This is in recognition of the fact that the Civ now has a lot more sub funds opening up on it. So the report follows the usual format. Um, the mitigating actions are in para 4.4. We've been discussing the climate change risk and mitigating actions on that. So that's in the risk register and it covers what we've been talking about, measuring the carbon footprint, moving um, the black crop portfolio to low carbon and moving the rump Aberdeen into sustainable equities on the on the London Sea. We've got the spread of the risk scores in para 4.6, which is page 14 of printed agenda. That shows the spread of the risk score. We've got the two red risks, which I've talked about, the funding systemic risk and the climate change risk. And then the, 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 pension, the printed agenda has got a little bit mixed up here, but the full risk register is on page 20 onwards. Right. I think that's it's, that's a pretty good uh, review of what's on here and the changes. Um, I guess, as always, what we're looking at as a committee is whether we think this is accurate, whether the changes uh, make sense to us, um, whether there's anything we think is not being uh, addressed or addressed properly. Um, just one question, Lorelei. Uh, this this is very much your document that you bring well to the committee and then they or to the panel and then they confirm it. Um, what what kind of level of input do you expect from that uh, from the panel? Um, well, the recommendation is to approve it or otherwise. So I'm happy yeah. for any level of debate. 
I'm happy to discuss risk scores. I'm happy to discuss if we've missed anything out. So I'm happy to, to have any engagement whatsoever on the risk register. You're quite right, it is an officer report, but it's on the, um, yeah. on the agenda in the public right. arena for members to comment on and adjust as they think appropriate. Uh, uh, any anyone with comments on the risk uh, register? I have chair, but um, I'm happy to, if anyone else wants to. Well, yep. if, right, thank you. Um, can I yep. can I talk about risk three? This is actually something that uh, I mentioned at the October meeting last year, um, and I'm pleased to see that it was said last year that we would ask. Uh, that the systems, what yeah. would happen in the case of a systems failure, uh, and that yeah. tested, and we are, um, and it was said that would be added to this, and I'm very pleased to see that. So thank you. However, the sentence that interests me is the fact that the the testing, uh, there's going to be a disaster recovery test in the next couple of months, which is a fairly vague response. Um, can I ask two questions connected with that? Do we happen to know if they did a, um, have they done a systems check since last October, and this will be another one in the light of the world we're living in now? And do we have an idea when that's going to be? Or is this the first time they'll have checked it since we raised some concerns in October last year? Yeah, Thank can I you. pass this one over to you, Tesh, Thomas? I'm delighted to speak to anybody. Okay. Yeah, um, they, they haven't done the, the test since um, since we last spoke. Um, I think COVID was uh, one, of, one of the main reasons for that, and it's it's delayed some of the, um, the items that they had planned to do. Um, so getting everyone set up working remotely was a big, big task for them, which I'm sure Eunice will talk about later. Um, and it's it's definitely still something that needs to be done. Um, we met with West Yorkshire earlier on today as well, and they talked about um, um, improving and upgrading their servers. Um, and that's, again, that's something that we can ask Eunice to expand on um, when, when he speaks later on. So to answer your question, the, the full DR um, hasn't been tested since we we put this on, but it is still on the cards for for something to get done really pretty soon. Would it be beyond? Um, would it be inappropriate for us to say that we fully understand the circumstances are a little bit flexible, and we're all playing that game at the moment? So I think we all understand that. But it would be nice, I think, to know that this will have been done by the t next time we meet. I appreciate that it's um, a matter of concern for everyone involved in the uh, the, the fund, but. Um, I certainly I would feel happier if uh, it, was, it was there was a slightly stronger reassurance it was going to happen not just the next couple of months feels well I've used the phrase myself so it feels sufficiently vague you see sorry no, I, I, I agree it is it is vague um, and I would feel a lot happier and reassured if we have a, a firm time scale with um, with planning that into to our timetable so that's something that I will certainly speak to West Yorkshire about um, and speak to Eunice about getting the range I'm very Chair, thank you very much. And I think he's on Chair, the call. Sorry, if, if, I, if I can butt in, the, in the, um, yeah. this is Eunice Kajal from West Yorkshire Pension Fund. Oh, yeah, um, yes. I'm, ha I'm happy to uh, give you a response on this if it's appropriate. Yeah, far away, saves time. Thank you. OK. Um, yeah, so, so he has, has, has touched on the fact that, that we haven't done a full disaster recovery. Um, but in effect, we have done a disaster recovery in terms of um, remote working, testing all our systems and processes uh, because um, that was thrown on us by, by, by the pandemic. So effectively, we, we've gone from virtually, let's say, 10% of our workforce being able to work from home to 100% of our workforce being able to work from home. And when I say work from home, what, what we've enabled is we can run our payrolls from home. We can access all the systems from home. So in effect, we've resurrected all the systems, all the processes, everything. So we've, we've tested that element of it. Um, we are in the process of upgrading to um, um, brand new um, servers, which are kind of, again, one, one of the obstacles we had is that we had a program to upgrade to um, Windows um, compliant servers because the, the old servers were running out of uh, support. Um, so that project is, is, is still going on. It, it got delayed because of um, um, issues around um, the council's own um, structure, um, their IT system structure, which was a little bit outdated um, more than ours. 
So we had to wait for them to catch up with us. So once all our new servers are installed, that effectively will be our disaster recovery test because we'll be moving all our applications onto the new servers. And, and, and again, we, we'll have effectively two systems running parallel as well. So if one, if a live, live system were to go down for any reason, we, we'd have a, another live system um, that we can resurrect. Um, and, and that's the bit really that, that that's the only bit that, that we will need to test everything else. In effect, we've tested by default now because of the pandemic situation. And, and, and we're happy that, that, that we can run our systems anywhere from anywhere effectively. Um, I, I hope that answers um, 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 your questions or, or allays some of the concerns that you have. But um, yeah, we, we will do a, 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 the remaining part of the disaster recovery and uh, feed the results back. Chair, could I just quickly feed yeah, back on that myself? Yeah. Thank you. Just very briefly, thank you. That was very useful to know, but maybe it would be helpful for people like me. Um, perhaps if the, the risk register in future could be updated to re to identify the fact that the uh, the checking and the reviewing is actually being done, if you like, in practice and in the field rather than in, at a theoretical level. Um, I think that makes it easier for me to understand. And so I'm not expecting for, if you like, a day in which testing is going to take place. Um, that's just my understanding. Thank you very much indeed. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll do that. Anyone else want to add to that or? No, OK. Uh, just for reference, risk 19 actually contains what was inserted into the uh, investment strategy, so it's quite a good place to refer back to it. Um, I, I think that there is just this intellectual problem of doing things to tick the box and uh, yet still complying with what we are supposed to be doing in generating the the uh, the best return that we can. Um, and obviously by, by moving these funds into a low carbon uh, portfolio. Um, I mean, do we know that's giving us a better return than the uh, the global equity portfolio? So it's to me the issue is whether you get the cart before the horse. But, um, the uh, papers that went to the panel last week showed that the financial return, both on BlackRock and the RBC Sustainable Equity, is higher than the return of the funds that they're currently in. Yep. Um, I mean, this is kind of presentation, also the BlackRock presentation, which was appended to the um, in strategy review paper. I think it was Appendix C. It's in there. Yeah. You would expect a fund which 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 um, uh, excludes certain stocks would have higher risk and higher return. Okay. That's what you'd expect, but you won't know for 25 years. We can we can take a view after 25 years. <laughs> I think again, just to spin this out a bit more for people who weren't there, um, there were concerns that um, in the re renewable energy fund we were we were talking about some companies which, or very, potentially investing in some companies which were very new, which were high risk, uh, which didn't have a track record. Um, and technologies weren't necessarily assured. So that there, although the potential there, if you were to land on a on a winner, then uh, you you could have an amazing uh, return. But the, the the risk was there. Have we hammered risk to death, or do we want to pursue any more? But we're basically happy with the report. Chair, could I just ask one further question? Uh, as long as I'm not wasting everybody's time, uh, and it's on, it's on, it's on risk 19, if you're agreeable. And, and this is probably me being a bearer of very little brain, but under the effectiveness of current controls, uh, obviously that's a policy statement, and it's been incorporated into the policy. Um, and as part of that policy statement, it identifies three things which are going to take place. But I, should there not be some kind of at least a rough timetable? Because at the moment, it's very easy to say we will do this. But if we don't say we will do this by X, then the we will do this never happens. Yeah, I mean, there is a, the timetable was actually discussed at the um, meeting on, on um, Wednesday last week. So very good. Number three, transferring the residual um, active that's going ahead now. It will complete in the next 10 days. 
the low carbon will complete in November. The carbon footprint, if the panel had agreed to Northern Trust doing it, would have been done for the next panel in December. But the panel didn't agree to that, so we're going to ask BlackRock to report on in, on this, in December. So yes, I, I can add the timetable to that. I'll do that for the next time, add the timetable to it, yeah. Uh, thank you, and not, not only that, it sounds like a good timetable, so I think you might as well crow about it, so thank you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> right, um, shall I move exclusion of the, uh, the press and public? Um, there's a bit of an error on the um, agenda printing. We do have another report and it's not appeared on the face of the agenda. So it's actually on page 16 of your printed copy. I think you mentioned that, yeah. sorry. Sorry, yeah. just yeah. before we move on from risk, Chair, if I may. Yeah. Yeah. Just one thing, I just just oh. on risk risk 12, risk 12. On, the, on training. Um, I, I appreciate the difficulties that, that, that um, the, the the remote world has brought us with regard to training, but uh, just just to sort of uh, reflect on the fact that um, training is is going to be a requirement of pension fund committees that's coming out of the scheme of advisory board good governance report. So um, it's just to, just to, to highlight that and 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 just so that we should keep a watch in brief um, on that particular issue. I know we have requirements as a local board already, and they are probably given that we've not met for a year probably up for some sort of tinkling with or refresh uh, I'd venture to suggest just to make sure everyone's um, keeping up the levels of professionalism and uh, that are required for this particular role. Yeah I mean yeah, we, we repeat uh, that all members are required to take the, the three day training which I think has happened hasn't it? And that we're required, members are asked to fill a training for when they attend external events. Um, I think you'll be doing that anyway, Neil, won't you? Just as part of your job. But yeah. Keeping a lot of training. Yeah, yeah, we have a we have a team that do that. Yeah. I think Lorelei is. Well, I get asked someone to do it for me. I say for a team to do it. <laughs> I think Lorelei is doing that for me, but I am kind of saving down the confirmations that I go to these Barnet Waddingham SIPA events and I've got one coming up uh, this week. Um, so the two of us are doing something. I guess we need to talk to Thomas about what would be what he adds to his three days of training and the uh, pension regulators training. I think it's worth talking about these things in detail in this meeting just to be open about it. It's very clear Bill wasn't going to do very much. Um, I mean, uh, uh, have you given any thought to this? Have you logged um, on? To no, I haven't, to be honest. I did the initial training that Laura Lai recommended. Yeah. I haven't done any training since. Okay. Um, there's some yeah. online stuff. I'll I'll okay. go back to Lorelei and we'll talk about how we we activate this for the newer members. Um, uh, it's it's one of those strange things that the pension fund panel itself doesn't have to do this. They, they're members. To me, it's odd, but um, uh, at least we we should get that. We should get I that think right. that's sort of the point I was making that, that that they might not at the moment, but they will have to. If um, well, the scheme advisory board have already come out with the first phase of good governance review, and one of the yeah. re recommendations is the pension fund committee or panel, those responsible for making investment decisions, do have at least the same level of education um, and training as um, as those local board members. It's, it's a good idea, but I think it's going to just make it even more difficult to get members to sit on the, the panel. Um, but in principle, it's a, it's it's important and it's sound. OK. Thank you for that. So we go back to page 16, Lorelei? Yes, um, well, thank you, Chair. It's, uh, it's a part one item. And it was, it's a quarterly overview. It went to um, the panel. And for some reason, it's not appeared on the face of the agenda. 
Yep. Um, so I'll quickly go through it. So Para 3 has the market value of the fund and we're showing a lot more information than we would normally. So a year ago in July 19, the fund was at 1.1 billion. Then we had the impact of COVID in March 20, a few months ago, and the fund fell to below a billion to 96 million. But in June, July, it's been rising back. And that's at the end of August, it was at a billion and 90,000. So it's, it's recovering quite, quite nicely to date. Um, table 3.2 is a more detailed allocation by asset class. It's quite a short report, this para breaches register. We haven't appended it because there haven't been any breaches, um, new breaches notified for a year now. Uh, a paragraph about the pension board and its meeting arrangements and then a paragraph about the AGM being deferred for this year, which probably means it will be cancelled for this year. And then the recommendations for the panel were to note the report and then to delegate any areas of work to the pension board. I mean, pension fund panel has been asked that several times now for four or five meetings and it hasn't identified any areas of work that it wants to delegate to the pension board. I would propose that we probably set some time aside. I know we're still only into a two meetings a year cycle, which I think most people know I would like to change. I think we should set a sizable chunk of one meeting aside to what additional work we should sensibly uh, doing. And uh, it's helpful if we actually get the, the panel to ask us to do it. But I believe we could be doing extra stuff in our own right. Chairman, can I suggest maybe is it is it possible for us to have, to have a meet an, an, a meeting an, an informal meeting to discuss that and then the proposals can be yeah. taken up to to pension yes. fund panel to consider yeah. so that we don't we're not constrained by those um, uh, conditions of the democratic services that would need to work under and also it would need not need to be public. I mean, uh, Thomas, are you um, amenable to doing something? We we need we didn't meet for very long, but um, I think we need to knock a few ideas around. Can I? Uh, I'll, I'll be happy to answer that, Chair. From my point of view, I'm, I'm always happy to meet informally if that would be useful. It's a very good way of um, fleshing things out. But I, I do have one question, which is, um, and forgive me, this may or may, if this isn't the place for it, then please, I'm happy to discuss it outside of this meeting. But the question I have is, my understanding of the role of the board is to sort of uh, take an overseeing view of the panel and uh, the panel, the fund, and it's um, the panel and its work on the fund. Uh, if we take work from it, then who is reviewing? our work well we're god we're allowed to uh, do that <laughs> yeah but, yeah but they used to be god didn't they and then we were created because they were getting too yeah. big for their godlike boots but there we are <laughs> I, I i take that no further but thank you well perhaps <clears throat> perhaps more odin than allah <laughs> yeah. yeah um i have I mean, no I'm objection I'm, I'm, to meeting I'm, informally that's fine but my understanding was as Thomas has just referred to the fact that we were just part of the panel overseeing, but um, yeah, if we need to review that, that's fine. Thank you. And just an observation, I've I, I, taken Thomas's point, um, but but the um, the role of the board is yes to to to, to assure compliance with the regulations. So it, it, it's I think traditionally pension fund panels have been investment panels and concentrated mostly on investment matters and they maybe have not had the time or inclination to give administration and governance matters uh, the um, the attention they are due and the pension board has potentially got it in its remit the opportunity to to look and make recommendations to the panel about administration and governance matters which they may not ordinarily have uh, had the time to to dedicate to that's just an observation uh, Laurel I will correct me but I think what you're describing is the position maybe a decade ago but gradually um, well in, in stage in steps and stages the pension fund panel uh, believed it had responsibilities and I think eventually the terms of reference was changed Laurel I is that right? Yes, that's Take right. Forward. For a long time we were just concentrating on investments, but a few years ago um, 
it must have come from one of these working groups, SAB or the precursor, SAB or the LGA told us that we should be looking at an administration as well. So we added that to our terms of reference because we've only been looking at administration for three, four years, I think. Well, we had the capital problems, which we also painfully remember, and I think that focused minds really. Yeah. To but the terms of reference was changed, wasn't it? To, it was changed, work. yeah. It yeah. was changed because it was deemed to be incomplete when we were just looking at it investments. But um, I'm sure you know the pension board can um, do has to do work on admin. Um, very happy for that. Yeah. I mean, there are questions raised. I mean, we have Eunice with us now, but there are questions which we, from our perspective, might want to be asking that the the board isn't asked. The fund panel isn't asking yeah i mean i think i think from, from my perspective and it's not clear to me um without wishing to be controversial it's not clear to me that the panel yes as yet sees the value in in the, in the board um yeah I, I'd, ex I'd expect that the, the board to have a a regular paper that goes to panel that to yep. explain its activities and to um to you know uh, provide um, observations on its activities. So um, yeah, that's just so that's just an observation. All, all they're getting at the moment is uh, one annual statement from us, um, which comes from two meetings a year. So um, I think somewhere along the line, either we have to ask for uh, advisors to, to prepare a report for us, and for there to be a budget to do that, or we, we have to do some additional work. Yeah. drawing on research of others but but presenting a report of our own yeah i think it says see 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 the, the board more as as internal audit you know an opportunity to 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 use to use that the 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 the, the, uh, the, the skills of and the experience okay. of the people in this board in order to to look at certain items that, that, the, panel, that the panel might see as being being uh, uh, useful or helpful uh, broadly comments on the report itself, this quarterly overview, general matters. And you've obviously got the uh, report that went to the uh, the panel, much more detailed report from the advisors. Um, it's it's. I don't want to say too much, but it, it's it's broadly speaking, it's a lot more positive than you might have imagined. Um, the the investments have are returning, have returned. And perhaps Laura like to tell, tell us where we are today or yesterday, but um, the, the fear would be, have been that uh, the investments would have collapsed and uh, we'd be facing a huge uh, loss, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But um, it's more positive than that. And, that, and nobody's running around panicking. Um, we've only got the end of August data so far. We'll get the end of September. Uh, later this week, beginning of um, next week. So the end of August, yeah, it's uh, one billion and ninety thousand. Yeah. The cash flow is holding up as well. But I suppose that the big elephant in the room is whether equities are massively overvalued. So. And we we have we have worries about the property investments and the and the elements property tied up in uh, other investments, so hidden away. But we do have the the two funds which are commercial property yeah we've got 30 million in thread needle and 17 million in cbre and the auditors have moved those to what they call as classified um tranche three investments because there's a material uncertainty over their valuations as at year end because you probably all know the property funds have to cease funding cease operating at year end because um they a, they couldn't do that proper valuations because there wasn't enough market data to do the valuations, but they also closed to stop people withdrawing money at a time when sales would have been illiquid. Um, so whether Threadneedle is worth £30 million, we'll probably find out in the next few weeks. And whether CBRE is actually worth £17 million, we'll find out in the next few weeks. I think that probably the value of valuation of the equities is the bigger concern, but that's a global thing. That's not specific to us. And that'll be that will affect Neil's fund as well. It'll affect all the pension funds. Yep. So yeah. 
We had a horrible, we had a horrible COVID, worse than you, Laura and I. So. Really? Yeah, we did, yeah. <laughs> Why? What happened? Oh, we would just, just, we just had too much in UK and uh, too much in Malchester Credit, and uh, yeah. both of them suffered very badly. Well, well yeah. Really We've got too much in the UK and we've got multi-asset credit, but that one's recovered for us. It's recovered now, but we had it was bad at the time. It was really bad. So, OK, we've sort of gone, gone up. Anyway, that's, that's a different matter. <laughs> well, yeah. The, yeah. The yeah. difficulty sitting here as the board is, are we looking at any of this and saying that the decision-making process before COVID was defective in some, some way? Um, no. Very, very few people no. anticipated what was going to happen, and no one could have predicted how it's ricocheted through the world, through through the financial markets. No. So, I would it, totally, totally agree. I don't think I don't think that the the the, the any anything that the, the if we, we could have anticipated it, we'd have you know short with equities and yeah. Uh, no doubt, Bill would disagree. He's not here. Yeah. So, shall I move to exclude the public and the press? I can I just make one comment. Sorry, if you, if you wouldn't mind, there's just a couple of areas that I wouldn't mind seeing included in this report, which yep. um, they may be included elsewhere, and I'd miss them. But, but um, just a highlight of any new employers joining the fund. I know it doesn't happen very often, but if they are, and it may be that they, they that they haven't been, um, just just to just I think that gives a good view of um, the employer cohort and yeah. the, the other thing is whether or not there is a um, a, a an articulated um, governance um, future plan with the CIV is, is there an idea that there is an intended um, uh, horizon for which we we will be expecting to transition assets. Is there is a, is there a plan? And it, it, if, even if it's it's not, it's only draft. It would be interesting to see that from the point of view of of you know the governance aspects of um, of the fund and how um, how and what elements of it the local board should be aware of. Yeah, uh, with the new employers joining the fund, I think that probably goes in Yunus's report um, on the governance with the CIV. Um, I suppose the main thing on that is um, whether we transition into the infrastructure or the, or the renewable energy. It's, the, you might remember Aon did a re yeah, yeah. review of the fund in March, and this is one of the things that we discuss um, moving the BGFs, which haven't performed particularly well, and moving those either into infrastructure or renewable energy. So that would happen in March time next year. But we haven't got any further plans apart from that as regards to SIB at the moment. OK. Um, yes, yeah, so that's that's all in all being discussed anyway. So there's. And I suppose we're waiting the government guidance on that cons that consultation they did. Yeah, yeah, indeed. About whether or by where do we have to move stuff? Yeah. Um, yeah, can I, can I, can I, can I add that onto this paper? And Tijesh can talk about the new employers. There is a section in in Eunice's report. That yeah, I, I thought I'd missed it. I thought it would be there. Sorry, apologies. So I move to exclude the press and the public, and then we can move to Eunice's report. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to disappear for a second and uh, put a curtain down. I'm being blinded by the setting sun. Excuse me, but I will. My volume's on, so if Eunice wishes to begin, then uh, don't wait for me to return. Uh, chair, oh, I was going to say, uh, can we check with our ICT? Sorry, could we just check with our ICT colleagues to make sure that the broadcast is now um, finished for the purposes of the public? That's a very good question. Yeah, um, I have now ended the 